to Juno's casual, laid back, unplanned, unedited, I don't even know what I'm going to do lessons. It's 5 a.m. and this is the only time I have to do this now. But I want to do this because these lessons are really going to help take your playing to the next level. And as a musician and as an artist, I just feel really passionate about us all sharing the information we have to help the world just create better music. So that's why I'm doing this. Um, I remember scouting through YouTube, um, just looking for any lesson that could help me not just learn songs and learn things, but really take my understanding of guitar and the instrument and what all this means and just to try and get better, but like to get smarter and not just memorize a bunch of stuff. Um, and when I really started to dive into theory and where things came from and and I started analyzing some of my favorite players like Jerris Mosey and John Mayer um, and Eric Walls and Isaiah Sharkey and I mean I could go on and on and on um, but I started to realize that the stuff they were playing was really really cool to me and it was really really possible when I took small chunks out of that um, I would, would literally watch Jairus Mozee shred for like four minutes straight. And I would go home and literally just take like 10 seconds of that <laughs> and try and figure out what he was doing. And um, it was that that opened up the door for me to just really expand my mind and my understanding of guitar and the instrument. I went to Berkeley, learned some more stuff there, dropped out. It wasn't for me. But... I did learn a lot while I was there. So I'm going to share some of those things with you guys. Um, my new EP is coming out hopefully soon. Um, I'm just really trying to fund it and do everything on my own so that I can have complete control of it. Um, this is my baby. It's so important to me. And I can't just like hand that to other people. So I'm really kind of like taking the long road to do it, um, do it myself. And these lessons are supporting me to be able to do that. So... Thank you so much uh, for your support. So let's dive in, okay? <clears throat> this chord progression you have um, is three chords, okay? D minor seven. And I'm gonna explain all of this in depth. I'm just going over it really quick first. E minor 7, and then A minor 7, and I'm doing this one open down here. Okay, the reason why I'm doing this one um, open is just to give it a different texture, to give it a different variety. I know hundreds of ways to play A minor 7. I can play it here, I can play it here, I can play it here, I can play it here. Okay, um, the point is to find a voicing find a shape that makes sense and that sounds good with the other chords you're playing. Um, and honestly, that comes from like trial and error, just guessing, putting stuff in while you're in rehearsal, trying it out and seeing if it works and um, stuff like that. So D minor seven, um, I'm gonna explain this shape because it's really, 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 really important to know if you're gonna know R&B chords. Um, so you got your first fret, your first finger, I'm sorry, on the fifth fret starting with the A string. You're gonna bar that all the way down all the strings. So A, D, G, B, and E strings. And if, you, if so far you're on the right track, it'll sound like this. Okay. Then you're gonna take your middle finger and put it on the sixth fret of the B string. Okay, and it's gonna sound like this. Then you're going to take your ring finger and you're going to put that on the 7th fret of the D string. 
so I don't have any cape or anything on. Fifth fret is completely barred. My middle finger is on the sixth fret of the B string. And my ring finger is on the seventh fret of the D string. Okay? So there you got D minor seven. Why is this D minor seven? So glad you asked. This is D minor seven because this note right here is D. Okay? This is the bass note. And for right now, because we're in the beginning stages, if, uh, oh man, I just noticed this. <sighs> oh. Dang. All right, so the good news is that E minor seven is the exact same shape as D minor seven, except, I'm gonna move this up a little bit. <clears throat> except, you're gonna take this shape and move it one whole step forward. So that's, bam, right there. So now you start at the seventh fret. And basically, a whole step is two half steps. So move this whole thing up one fret, and then move it up another fret. And that's how you got uh, E minor, okay? So already, you can kinda, I'll go over some of that stuff in the advanced lessons, but that's just an example of how you can mess around going between D minor seven and E minor seven. And it's just two chords, but again, R&B is all about feeling, it's all about enhancement, and making simple things sound and feel really good, all right? So you got D minor seven, E minor seven, okay? And over here with my fingers, blah, 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 blah. What I'm doing is I'm using them to just grab the strings, okay? So I'm starting with my thumb, and I'm starting with the A string, and I'm going thumb with the A string, first finger on the D string, middle finger on the G string, ring finger on the B string, and then my first finger kind of grabs it. So. Sorry, not my first finger grabs it, my ring finger grabs it. And it's hard, it's always difficult when I try and explain that because it's not something, I never like studied like how to grab the strings or how to um, arpeggiate the strings. I think I just, I think I just kind of do what feels natural for me and I recommend that because um, as you're playing and So I'm just making that up, but as you're playing and you do the things that, that feel good to you and you like do the ideas um, that are in your head, it's going to make you play better, it's going to make you sound better, it's going to make you feel more natural and more normal instead of sometimes like I'll try and do something that I don't even know what I'm trying to do. I'm just like trying to do something cool, but I'm not really being like intentional and that's when I mess up or that's when I make mistakes. So. Practice that over and over, D minor 7 to E minor 7. Okay, and then when you're ready, we're going to add one more chord, which is A minor 7. I'm sorry, A minor. It's not going to be minor 7. Okay, um, why am I doing this chord? Well, because it just sounds good, honestly. I like that open chord. I like to switch it up. Um, A minor, you got your middle fingers the middle finger and the ring finger on the second fret of the D string and the B string and then you have your first finger on the first fret of the B string okay most people know that chord A minor uh, one of the things that I started to do um, that, that got cool is that I would experiment with like lifting my first finger up so I'll just show you what that sounds like Um, so what am I doing? I'm taking my first finger 
and I'm just kind of like randomly lifting it up, putting it down. And I think I'm kind of just like flowing with it over here with my hands. Again, I'm, I'm really just grabbing the strings kind of randomly. I'm not really thinking about it. Um, I know they have like patterns and stuff like that, but I don't know. I always thought that was weird to be like thinking about a pattern while you're trying to do something like that. I don't know. For, that's just me personally um, because it just feels more natural. It just feels more natural to just kind of, you know what I'm saying, just kind of flow and naturally use your hands. It's almost like if you drop something and you went to pick it up, you wouldn't be like thumb, finger to pick it. You know what I'm saying? You would just pick it up. So that's the way I kind of approach guitar. Like I think because um, most of my learning and stuff was just from like doing doing it and being in the moment. I didn't really have um, access to like patterns and stuff. I just kind of did what felt natural to me. So everything we do, always do what feels natural to you. Um, and just like those things you hear, those ideas that you hear in your head, keep trying to express those and get those out because those are the things that actually are like your personality as a player. Um, all right, so we got D minor seven, E minor seven, A minor seven. All right, now, as you can see, like that, it was sounding kind of like sad and somber. If I want to make it sound R&B, I can use my hands or my pick, okay? And I'm going to do both just so y'all can see the example. So. Okay, we're getting somewhere. That's one option. No time, no whatever, no Juno swag, just regular, regular, regular. Okay? Now, I'm gonna swag it up. And I'm gonna lose the pick personally because, well, I'll, let me do it with the pick just to show you. I don't even know what I'm gonna do, but I'll just experiment and just see what happens. Five, six, five. way I'm playing the chorus because that's really important okay um, <clears throat> one technique you can do is that you can use your hands okay I love to use my hands personally because I feel like it really makes me feel connected with the guitar connected with the music and it's really coming from me so that's why I like to use my hands and it's just I don't know it's just fun so that's why I do it um, I'll show you kind of really slow the the kind of thing I'm doing so Arpeggiating kind of the chorus, my nose is just itching, it's 5.30 Um the I'm arpeggiating the chord so that I'm kind of playing the notes individually. And then I'm also like creating a rhythm so that it's kind of like, you know what I'm saying? You know, you feel me? You know? Alright, so um, it's kind of weird. I feel like I'm talking to myself. So I'm just going to respond every once in a while. You feel me? Yeah, I feel you. I feel you. Okay, so when you grab the strings, do it with swag, man. Don't just be like... Uh-uh, uh-uh. Okay, so when 
I mean by with swag and with intention, every time you play, play like you own the guitar. Like, whatever you about to play, you made it up. You know what I'm saying? That confidence and that going into stuff with, with like this powerful intention, it really affects the way you play the guitar and it really affects the way you hold the guitar, the way you sit, the way you make eye contact with people. All of that stuff is really important. So don't forget those things. Don't forget to add your own personality because a lot of guitar players I see trying to sound like each other, or trying to mimic each other. That's cool. Do it, do it, do it, do it. But then say, okay, what do I bring to the instrument? What's, what's my thing that I bring that nobody else brings? And that's why I say it's no competition because you can have the best player in the world next to you and you should never feel intimidated by that because he can't do what you do or she can't do what you do. Everybody has their own, their own sound and their own voice. So I'm going to show you what I'm doing, but I really challenge you to take this and make up your own stuff as well, okay? Um, I'm just grabbing the strings one at a time and then I'm slapping the guitar. Okay, so I'm starting with the A string. And then I'm going up to E minor 7 and grabbing it again. Then going down to that A minor. Okay. Practice that over and over because it's one of those things that if you, if you don't, if it's not natural for you, if you just do it over like 20 times in a row, it, I promise you, it'll just start to feel easier. And then after an hour, after two hours, it'll start to feel easier. Okay. Um, that lick I'm doing in between. All right. I did a lick and I'm going to teach you that. There's kind of two licks that I did. One was the lifting up the finger. All right. And I already kind of went over that. And then the other one is, okay? And I'm on the, if you look at the D minor shape, I don't know why I'm yelling all of a sudden. If you look at the D minor shape, um, and you kind of keep your hands here, you have this. All right? So I got my first two fingers, my first finger on the fifth fret of the G and the B string. Okay, so I'm going, I'm hammering down, and then I'm sliding. So, when you hammer down, you're on the 5th fret of the B string and the 6th fret of, I'm sorry, the 6th fret of the B string and the 7th fret of the G string. And then you take that shape and you slide it a whole step. Alright, um, that is just a little lick that I like to put in between. You can put it wherever you want. Um, and experiment and move with it. You see where I put it, okay? So I went, and I'm going fast just so we can get through it. See, so I'm even playing it different now, a little bit gentler. Did you see how I just put the lick in a different place? What I want you to do is not just memorize where I put it. I want you to make up where you put it. I want you to create your own space to put that lick. Okay? That's a dope, dope lick. I don't want to curse. I don't know if there's any kids in the back. But that's a dope lick um, to just kind of put anywhere you want. So experiment with that and have fun. I'm going to one more time play through the progression, do some ideas. This is a beginner's lesson, but I hope it challenges you to push yourself, even if you have no idea what I'm talking about. <laughs> Just watch the video again and, and, and keep trying, keep playing, keep practicing. I promise you, the more repetition, it gets better and it gets easier.